start the four car operation so we've just done that now you can see what happened when car number four came in and across the detector it slowed down to speed 10 uh, car number one which is up in front the red car currently going back across the bridges is running at mainline speed 20 and in uh, in the front corner you can see car 2 and car 3 kind of chasing each other there it doesn't really matter how close those cars are in the yard area and we're calling we got a sign here it says yard we're calling this the yard area immediately downstream of the detector and kind of around the corner doesn't matter how close they are in the yard area we just gotta keep them uh, away from the front car the front car which is coming around by the detector right now that has to cross the detector and not have any of the other cars chasing it immediately and this this follows from the previous video we had demo four in the previous video we had a single detector and we were using a station stop uh, and by station stop I mean it came across the detector and the car actually stopped here we're just keeping all four of them in motion and as shown here right now we're actually using four cars most people would probably prefer the station stop but this is a simpler program it actually takes less commands to, to keep all cars in motion In the video 819, use this method with three HO trains. It's a little more difficult with trains because you got to get the whole train past the detector. Uh, with these streetcars, they're relatively short compared to a train, so we just bring them in past the detector and slow them down. Now, the, the repeat switch was open, which means it made one cycle. And it's, it's going to stop and wait till somebody pushes a button again, and then the system will start up, which we'll do in a minute. The initial conditions of this operation is to have car four which is here upstream of the detector which is over here in cars one two and three sitting downstream of the detector uh, and the cars are numbered this, this first red car is car one the uh, yellow car is car two and in the red car with the sign on the top of it is car three and the yellow car with the sign on top is car four so notice the uh, the red cars are the odd numbers 1 and 3, the yellow cars are the even numbers 2 and 4. And we'll be running these things at a speed of 20 on the main line and a speed of 12, 10, or 12, 10 or 11 in the yard. We're using 10, 11 and 12 in the yard to keep them running a relatively slow speed in the, on, in the yard. But when the front car is on the main line we run it running significantly faster and we've got the repeat switch open which is here so these should make one cycle and stop now this is programmed currently that switch number push button number three which is down here will start the four car operation so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna close the repeat switch and then push that button again and this could be like a public display where they sit and wait till somebody from the public pushes the button you can locate you can wire these buttons in parallel so you can have another start button someplace out on the front of the layout where the public could push it Now what happened, car 4 came across the detector and it slowed from speed, it, it slowed down from speed 20, the mainline speed, to speed 10, which is what you see it's creeping along there now. And car 3 in front of it's 
going just slightly faster and likewise car two which is back there in the rear uh, entering the first of the bridges. Now the red car, car number one that's on the inside, that's running at mainline speed 20 and it's heading for the detector. So when it crosses the detector, uh, car number two which is a yellow car back in the rear and the far end, that's speeded up to 20. You can see it's going in front of the control panel right now and where the power cab's laying there. That's running at speed 20. The key thing here is that the, the front car needs to be running significantly faster. When I say front car, I mean the one that's closest to the detector on the upstream side because it has to go through the detector. It has to go past the detector and there's a time delay of about two seconds to make sure the detector changes from red back to green. Now right now it went past the detector and there's a time delay being executed and we can't have another car come in until that time delay is finished executing or the detector won't, won't detect it so to speak. I should say the mini panel won't detect it. Now you can see that car came, car number two came in off the main line, is running slow. There's car number three just came past the detector and it slowed down and it bumped car number two, which is the one on the uh, corner here, it bumped it up one, one speed notch. Now car number four is on the main line and it's running at speed 20. So basically our, our logic here is we try to keep one car in the front on the main line running fast at speed 20 and keep the other cars behind it running speed slow so they speeds slower like 10, 11, and 12 so they stay back in the rear and then when that car comes in across the detector you see one coming now that's car 1 it slows from speed 20 to, down to speed 10 and we speed the, uh, the, what's now the front car, which is the yellow one back there, we speed that up to speed 20 and bump the other cars up just one, one speed notch, but they're still running slow. Any cars that are running faster, they're going to get around the loop faster, but when they come to the detector, they'll still get their speed slowed way down to speed step 10 so the system hopefully keeps the cars separated. Since the first of these streetcar videos, 830 was the first one, we were using a, a four-digit car numbers. What I did for the previous video, 831, in this video, I renumbered the cars 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and just used a short address. It seems like it makes it easier to keep track of them. The, the numbers on the side of the car and end gauge are so small it's hard to read them. And uh, Besides, I've got duplicates. Now obviously we could do this for, we're probably at the limit with four cars, the amount of, the amount of instructions pro, to, to program this takes up a, a certain you know, amount of space inside the mini, mini panel and as the system's running now there's also a routine to run three cars which I'll demonstrate and there's a routine to run just two cars which we'll also demonstrate. So between those three programs, uh, you pretty much filled up the amount of space we have in that mini panel to, to program instructions into it. But I uh, hope it's a fairly simple logic. Hopefully you can see the logic. The the car that's the car that's on the main line, that that would be car or car three right there. 
running. That's that's the front car, so it's running a speed 20, and when it gets past the detector, we'll reduce its speed to 10, and then the cars in front of it will increase them one speed step. That one got increased from speed 10 to 11, and the car back in the rear on the bridge line, so to speak, got increased from 11 to 12. Just try to keep them running slow, but still separated. And like I mentioned earlier, probably most people doing this, if, ever, if anybody else besides me ever does this, probably most people doing this would prefer to, to program it with a station stop. If you remember Demo 4, I think it was from the previous video, the cars would come in past the detector and they'd actually stop and then the, one, of them, one of them would be out on the main line running slow and the other one, other one of the three would be running fast. The station stop is probably a nicer effect but it does it takes a few more commands to program the station stop and uh, we wanted to show we wanted to show you this option which is actually easier easier to do to do the programming now I'll go over there and open the repeat switch The repeat switch is open, so when that car 3 crosses the detector and the delay statement executes and ends, the program will check to see if the repeat switch is closed and it no longer is since I opened it, so everything will stop. And uh, again, like I said earlier, if this was a public display, those would all sit there and wait for however long until somebody came by and pushed the button again and let's demonstrate that just to start them up again we push the start button again start, that starts everything up so they re resume operation again Now when car number four passes in front of the detector, the mini panel will send the commands to start the other three cars up and everything will be in motion from that point. Now they're all three back in motion and if I go close the, close the repeat switch, these will just keep operating for as long as we leave the repeat switch closed. Now we'll demonstrate the same operation with just three cars on the line. We'll be using uh, still a main line speed of 20, but our yard speeds of 11 and 12. So when this starts up, uh, the first time this comes around the cross, that's car 2 back there. When it comes around and crosses a detector, it'll start this car, I believe, at speed 12. That's car 3, and car 1 at speed 11. And then it'll, when that crosses in front of the detector, detector, it'll be traveling at speed 20, but it'll slow it down to speed 10, so it's going slower than these other two cars. So our repeat switch is closed, and we have push button 1 wired up to uh, start the uh, three-car operation. Now that yellow car, that's car 2, that slowed from speed 20 down to speed 10. Car 3 uh, is actually running at speed 20 because it's now the front car. And in the, the middle car, the, the red one there, car 1, that's running at speed 11, I believe. I take it back, that's actually speed 12 on the middle on the middle car there. Now the same 
way car 3 is approaching the detector at speed 20. So when it crosses the detector, it will be slowed, slowed down to speed 11. And the uh, yellow car back in the rear crossing the front, the furthermost bridge, will be speeded up to speed 12. And then the uh, red car number 1 coming around the curb here, that's speeded up to 20. And just to review some of the stuff, this was all covered in the previous video, 831, but we're running a Bachman N-Gage DCC streetcars, Peter Witt streetcars here, and we're using Z-Stuff infrared detectors. What you see is a, on the layout there is a Z-Stuff DZ1012 infrared block signal detector and it's wired to a, a Z-Stuff uh, single-pole double-throw relay, a DZ1008 relay, also made by Z-Stuff. And then the control, uh, same as with the previous videos, is being done by a device called an NCE DCC mini panel, and that's sitting back there on the uh, control board, and the power is being provided by an NCE power cab. And we've got this thing back on the control board that I referred to earlier called a repeat switch. It's just a single pole, single throw switch. If it's closed, the program checks to see if it's, it, it would, if it's closed when the program checks to see at the end of the routine if it's closed, the program keeps repeating. If what we call the repeat switch um, is open, the program checks that in, at the end of the routine. And if it's open, it terminates. And that's how we stop the cars uh, gracefully, so to speak. The, the routine just ends. Then it waits till somebody pushes the push button again. And these, although we're using in this video the uh, Z stuff infrared detectors, this you know in a large this probably could also you could use an electric eye under the track. We've done that in a few videos. I I haven't used the electric eyes a whole lot because I have problems with them being triggered by uh, external lights sometimes, or sometimes there's not enough light if, if I'm running a display and they put me in a dark corner. I've had that happen also or I've had to go find a table lamp and shine it on the layout to get enough light to operate the electric eye. But if, if this was a larger scale, probably HO or larger, you could probably use a magnet on the bottom of the car and a reed switch in the track is, a, is an alternate method of detection. All, you, all you're doing, you're grounding an input of the mini panel. You're, you're just connecting an input in this case, we're using input 14. Uh, we're grounding input 14. When that, like when that red car coming in front of the detector, when that changes to red, uh, the block signal closes the re -stuff, Z stuff relay, which grounds input 14. And that's how the mini panel knows that that car has arrived. So that could be done by a, a read switch also. And just incidentally, there's a website called spookshow.net, which reviews N-Gage products, and they they give these N-Gage, these Bachman N-Gage uh, streetcars a high rating. I'm not familiar with them, but I just recently acquired six of them. And the drawings and commands for all of this are on the uh, Auto Controls website. The documentation website is at autocontrols.wordpress.com, which is part of the autocontrols.org website. Just look for video 832. It, show, it shows the wiring diagram to hook up that control panel. It's actually pretty simple. And the, uh, also the commands to run these cars, which are not that difficult. Now we'll open the repeat switch.
Now, as, as I've been talking and these cars have been running, that routine's been executing over and over again since the repeat switch is open. The next time it gets to the end of the routine, which is right there, you can see it checked input 18, which is where the repeat switch is connected. And since that was open, the, uh, the it stopped executing commands. So, again, if this was like on a public display or something, those cars would sit there with their lights on, ready to go until somebody pushed the start button. And incidentally, there's there's uh, commands in the routine to turn the lights on automatically, so I don't have to do that manually.